In tonight's interview, I'm going to talk about the increasingly toxic level of abuse that female MPs get. Racist insults and sexist insults. Death threats, verbal abuse and online intimidation. Female MPs in particular are the target. Stella Creasy has had rape threats. Luciana Berger was subjected to months of online hate and anti-Semitic insults. With Diane Abbott, the most regular target of racism. She was sent almost half of all hateful and abusive tweets in the entire election campaign across all parties. So please welcome Diane Abbott. <laughs> I feel like I want to hug you. Is that allowed? You don't want <laughs> even a little hug? It's just I've read so much. And it just seems like you've had a really tough week. Thank you. And I want to hug you. Genuinely, is that allowed? <laughs> but clearly, don't get too tough. <laughs> it was amazing. I, like, I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't realise how tough it must be. Well, I think most people didn't. Um, the first thing to say, I mean, politicians aren't the most popular people in the world. Yes. Some of your audience must be thinking, abusing politicians, what's not to like? But the point is the type of abuse. Completely. Rape threats, death threats, nigger bitch, you know, you'd look much better if we threw acid in your face. And it's just reached an incredible volume yeah. in recent times. It's not about policy, it's not about uh, political orientation, it's just vicious racism or misogyny? It's, it's just personal abuse. Yeah. When I used to get death threats a little while ago, I used to say to myself, well, it'll never happen. But then, of course, my colleague, yeah. Joe Cox, got killed yeah. by this racist extremist. Yeah. So you now have to take a lot of it much more seriously. But even if you're not frightened of the death threats, it's so debilitating and undermining because Every morning, my staff come in, they switch on the computer, and there's this stuff in emails. They open the post, there's this stuff coming through in letters. I try and keep it off Twitter, but when I do dip into Twitter, there's this disgusting stuff. And it's meant to demoralise you, it's meant to undermine you. I think it's really meant to make you think that as a black woman, you shouldn't be in the public space. And that's horrible. Absolutely. But, and it, and it, just, it just feels like, surely get angry at Twitter or Facebook for letting this happen. It's not your fault. No, there's, there's, there's a lot more Twitter and Facebook and online could do. Yeah. You know, when I first became a Member of Parliament, which is 30 years ago now, you know, you got maybe one racist letter a week, but to send a racist letter, you had to write it out, you had to find an envelope, you had to put a stamp on it and put it in the letterbox. Yeah. Now you press a button and you send hundreds of abusive tweets. W one of the problems, I think, is anonymity yeah. online. Yeah. I think Facebook and Twitter ought to allow you to have an anonymous, you know, image but they ought to know your name and address. We have referred 45 emails to the police because they were violent threats, and the police aren't able to trace who they are because people are anonymous. And how do you carry on? Because well, when I get abused, it's funny. Like, I've got a lazy eye, and a woman met me in the street and said, when you come, do your eyes look normal? And... <laughs> <laughs> and at least, but at least... Exactly, and it's and it, it, it's kind of funny. But the and I'll be honest with you, I've I've made jokes about you in the past because I and I, I stand by them. For my money, you are the worst ever a hide and seek that I've ever seen. We've actually got <laughs> a clip of, of Diane. This is this is astonishing. Diane Abbott, very nice to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. So more reaction from Scotland. Very <laughs> short. I mean, you're terrible. Um, why is it always women? That's another thing that... that because I know and lots, of, lots of female comedians and MPs like... Um, I mean, she's not an MP, is she an MP? But Caroline criado Perez. She's a feminist and an activist. She, and I mean, you probably know the story, but um, she campaigned to get a woman on the £10 note. Yeah. And she wanted Jane Austen. And the, just people were threatening with, you know, with rape mm. and acid attacks. One, I actually read a tweet that said, women don't belong to money. And you're like, the queen? <laughs> like, it, and Mary Beard is another one. Yeah. Um, is oh. Extraordinary woman. And so if you know about Mary Beard, you probably do. She's a historian, very clever lady, goes on TV, talks about the Romans. And I've actually got some of the, mm. the, um, the abuse that has been said about. This is pretty full on, so I should warn you. But... 
said about Mary after going on TV to talk about the Romans. A bomb has been placed outside your home. It will go off at exactly 10.47 and destroy everything. Another one, I'll cut your head off and rape it. And another one, you filthy old slut. I bet your vagina is disgusting. And what, what, the thing that baffles me about it is it, it just feels like Twitter and Facebook has kind of opened up a world that I thought had gone. Yeah, it really has um, unleashed stuff, mm. which, like you, I thought we'd moved beyond. But yeah. it's the anonymity and the ease, which means that some pretty awful people are able to put this stuff out there. And when they see each other's tweets and emails, that gives them confidence to do even more of it. Mm. But there is hope, because I don't know if you saw, there's a beautiful thing with Mary Beard where she... Have you seen this? Have a look at this. This is so lovely. Uh, when I saw that, <laughs> I said, I think you should take this down on Twitter. Nothing happened. I said, please, I think you should take this down. Um, nothing happened. Then someone tweeted, I know his mum, and I think I'll tell her. <laughs> and it went down. <laughs> Surely is what we have to do. Yeah, if only we knew all of them. We mums. need the mums. Yeah, we need the mums. <laughs> yeah, that... Do you think social media has set us back? Because if you look about, we essentially, America elected a troll. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they kind of did, you know? What do you make of Trump getting rid of transgender people from the military? I mean, that's just bizarre. Yeah. I mean, it's, first of all, Trump is not in a position to call other people weird. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> No, and it's, it's part of a pattern of, just to be quite serious, it's part of a pattern of kind of anti-LGBT prejudice yeah. that Trump is prepared to pander to, yeah. let alone, you know, his, his position on white nationalism. No, I think it's ridiculous, the, the ban from the army. I wanted to cheer you up. Um, I genuinely did, because... And, I, and I, I thought, how can I do this? And it's a surprise... I've got a surprise for you, and I've got a surprise for Mary Beard, and a surprise for hopefully all women in the public eye who get abuse, because I found a poet called uh, Megan Beach, who is honestly absolutely brilliant, and she has written a poem about what we've been discussing, and she's going to perform it tonight. So this is for the audience, but mostly for you. I think you're going to love it. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Megan Beach. So this is a poem I wrote, uh, it's for my friend, the troll slayer, the inimitable, the Cambridge classicist, <laughs> can you get more badass? Uh, this is for Mary Bid, it's also for Diane tonight and all the anonymous women online who receive abuse for the crime of being alive. When I grow up... I want to be Mary Beard, a classy, classic, classicist, intellectually revered, wickedly wonderful and wise, full to brim with life, whilst explaining the way in which Caligula died on BBC primetime. I would like, like her to shine, the kind inclined to speak her mind, refined and blinding. Yet I am finding it tough to grow up in a world where Twitter is littered with abuse towards women, where intelligent, eminent, eloquent females are met with derision because she should be able to analyse Augustus's dictums or early AD epithets without having to scroll through death, bomb or rape threats. So do not tell me that this is just the internet or a public figure deserves everything they get because this isn't just about one academic. It's endemic in this society and mess in sexist rhetoric, I cannot live accepting it. Because when I grow up, I want to be Mary Beard, to wear shiny converse and converse on conquerors and pioneers, a sheer delight, an igniter of young minds, but never your victim, like Minerva herself, a goddess of wisdom. Thank you. Well done, Megan. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, So great. Well done, mate. That was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. That was lovely. Isn't it lovely? Really lovely. Yeah, well done. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Diane Abbott. <laughs>